All right. Well, hello again. This is Buck Benny speaking. I am joined by our friend Terry Phillips. Give us a wave, Terry. Hey, Terry. Hey. And by our friend John Henderson. Uh, John. Oh, this it from this day. Yay! Yes, yes. The the marvelous podcast. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Mine is just plain tragedy. So. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we have Kathy Fuller Seeley with us. And uh, Kathy, we, we've got news on the Kathy front because I have been over there on uh, Facebook, or the Jack Benny uh, International Kathy International Fan Club Facebook page. Anyway, yeah, yeah. and uh, she has been posting pictures of the cover and the back page of her of her newest book that she's got, which is. Uh, the the Lost Scripts, another Lost Scripts edition, volume two. And uh, the first one I've given, been giving her a hard time because the the, the colors kind of match up with Jello, but uh, I, I said she should have started with, doesn't what, what what color does he start with when when they, on the announcement? Strawberry, right. Strawberry, Strawberry indeed. Strawberry. I should have done that, but this is indeed before yes. Jello. Yes. Ah. I'll, I will be in the Jello color range when we get to uh, no, uh, October 1934. And there the, you go. Uh, and there you go. Picking it up. So, because so, so, so for right now she's kind of got so the first one. I, I'd say is closest to blueberry, probably. Yep. The, yep. Now, now one. I got a kind of emerald green lime color. Yes. So uh, uh, my my kind of goal was to have if we can get through all ten volumes, uh, you know, it will be all the way through the. Um, uh, the color spectrum and maybe back around again. Yeah. So, uh, but but yeah. indeed, Jello flavors will be highlighted when we get to 1934. Yep. Uh, and that is that that is unfortunately the scariest part of this thing is that my very favorite volume will probably be the last volume because uh, Jack just keeps getting better and better. And so, are we going to make it to our very favorite ones or not? I, I don't know. Hopefully, Ben will keep it going for that. 10, so you think it'll exactly. take about 10 volumes? There are a lot of, you know, it's 250 scripts. Yeah. But I tell you what, no matter what, I will make them available. So if Ben can no longer uh, feel up to, you know, uh, publishing yeah. them, I've got the scripts and they will be come well, available. Somehow. As I said, I he's, he's doing such a wonderful job. And at least this time I get to thank you all. Uh, in yes. the acknowledgments, as he said, Daryl had the marvelous idea that I should write a little synopsis of the episode on the page right before you read it. So now you'll you'll get a few more sort of highlights and know what to expect. This oh, they're is, wonderful! Because in this, uh, I, in this thir go ahead. yeah, in this thirteen week period, they do their first uh, movie parody, a parody of Grand Hotel, which is really wonderful because Jack takes the romantic role and plays it romantically. He, he does John Barrymore as the Baron. Uh, and uh, Jack and Mary pursue a romance, declare their love for each other. And I think uh, just as they're doing it, uh, uh, Jack and his writer, Harry Kahn, go, what have we done? You know, we've jumped the shark. We've killed, you know, like in Moonlighting, what, the, what, what will be romantic or foolish tension anymore? So the very next episode, she's off, Mary, the... Mary character is is back flirting with band members and things like that. So, uh, so that's that's really cool. And then the, I, I've got a preview copy of it or whatever, and so uh, her little blurbs are just perfect. I mean, they 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 entice you to go, oh yeah, this is one I want to read. And it just because because you're you're making a commitment to reading one of the scripts, and the and scripts aren't the easiest things always to read and understand what's going on. So it's really nice to have a little quick summary ahead of time to tell you where that script's going and they always say whether it features mary or there's no mary in it which is helpful too um i, I love them I, I think i think it's great i think it's Hooray. far I superior hope, to the I first one it, yeah. go ahead well well i'll do a, a second edition of the first one one of these yeah. days but it'll be out it may not make it by christmas but definitely in the new year yeah and uh uh if if you know me maybe i can get you a special deal so. yeah <laughs> It's really nice. So uh, anyway, so something to really look forward to. Well, uh, today, what we're bringing you is uh, the Jack Benny, the very first color special that he did. Uh, this is from 1965. 
Uh, this is a great uh, Jack Benny special, at least for me. I really enjoyed it. It's one of my absolute favorites. Probably for me, the three top ones are this one and really? the two from 7071. I, I really enjoy the, because 7071 is when we have the uh, the uh, 20th anniversary of the Jack Benny television show where he has all the, the cast members come back on and that's a lovely episode. And then the second one uh, that actually I just released this last week um, and got a lot of people uh, interested in it was great, was the one with Phil Harris on it. And that's a wonderful special from the 7071 season. But this 65 season, um, has this, so this is right after he uh, went off the air as far as um, his uh, television show, his regular weekly television show went and uh, got a, it's probably his biggest guest sort of slate that he's had uh, with the Beach Boys. I don't think he's ever had a bigger, um, and, and right at the height of their career and everything. This is this is pretty amazing to get to catch the Beach Boys. And then uh, Bob Hope's on it, of course. Uh, doing a wonderful job, and I just love the section uh, with Walt Disney on it. So just a, a lot of great folks on here, beautiful color. Uh, I, I just love this whole thing. Um, let's go ahead and, and uh, go over to John and get John's impression of this special. Yeah, I'll give you my general thoughts yeah. first, which is uh, this is quite unusual when you consider where he came from. And I didn't realize until Kathy sent that, um, it must have been a review or an ad, that this was his first, you know, season after having done sort of the traditional Jack Benny show that we know. I always assumed there was a bigger gap in between because this is so much different than his regular television show. Not just that it's in color, but it's a variety show. It's not your typical jack benny show i always oh, come on now benny. john it's just two shows put together it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when i think of a special i think no we'll go. he says that joke a lot anyway go ahead yeah well <laughs> like i i knew jack benny from the radio show primarily and i like i didn't grow up with jack benny on television like you know my parents or whatever so i really had never seen it and this is being the first one it's the first one that i watched so watching it was just like it was like a mind blowing trip to like see what was happening, <laughs> right? I mean, the even the variety show format. Since then, I've seen a lot more variety shows, you know, from DVDs that have come since then. But this was one of my first, you know, looks at like a variety, sort of a medium variety show, and so I thought it was very interesting. I thought it like every when he came out with the mop top and the Beach Boys are there. I'm like, it's the Beach Boys, what's going on? <laughs> and uh, and then, you know, uh, Walt Disney. So I thought that was a lot of fun. And I, I love classic TV. So to see the classic TV spoof, it was so fun to try to figure out like, oh, I know that one, I know that one. Right. Ooh, I, I don't know that one. So I thought that was, I thought that was a lot of fun. And I, I'm surprised how many of these television shows are still known today you know like i knew yeah. the monsters the adams family bewitched the fugitive the only ones i didn't know were peyton place which i guess is a uh, like soap opera yep i yeah. knew of laughing but i'd never seen it and my mother once oh, my mother once told me about the show my mother the car so that's the only reason i knew that but that is the other piece that's, that's great about this is going through all the old shows. If you're if you're into old television, this is a great episode to watch. So the little spoofs and plays on all those other shows. Uh, the only other thing I was going to mention on this on the Walt Disney part is I'm so delighted that he did this with Disney when he did, because you would just think at the time I'm sure. Oh well, I've got years and I can I can grab yeah. you know a, have a Disney. Um, uh, as a guest anytime but the reality was he had maybe a couple shots at it and then and then of course Disney passed away in 67 so um, this was great to have this uh, later um, view of, of Walt Disney and it just reminded me of all the openings that you get of the Disney show uh, where he was there uh, which is still a frustration to me because I wish on Disney plus that they had all these old uh, episodes with uh, Walt introducing them. I, I don't know why they don't 
have more of those they have like three yeah. or something they, yeah. there's fewer episodes on disney plus than there is even on dvd like i've got the walt disney treasures the leonard martin yep. collection and there's lots of well there's a handful at least a handful yeah 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 but i mean there should be hundreds yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like it doesn't you know and you could go on youtube and there's quite a few out there on youtube but uh still you're talking a couple dozen that's it so. well may, may, maybe they uh want us to hang around for future development exactly if you exactly. give away I would the love store, it if they, you know if you give away the store at the very beginning there will not be nothing to uh, a premiere later yeah so. true true yeah, yeah um, I, go I, ahead well, uh, we'll, we'll we'll head on over to kathy i guess kathy what were your thoughts on this episode oh well well i'm um like i said i i wasn't able to print them but um, we can put in the comments. I happen to find two reviews from Variety of this show. Uh, they would not have, um, uh, you know, done if it was just a regular episode of the of the uh, uh, sitcom or Joe or Jack's older show. But now, because they're specials, um, uh, Variety is going to give each one a review. And the first review uh, from a, a close friend of Jack says, "This is the greatest thing since sliced bread." Benny at his best, they pick out everything that's wonderful. The second review says, um, this stinks. So <laughs> the, the second review um, just wanted something different. Perhaps it was a younger reviewer who wanted, who was frustrated with this variety format and wanted uh, uh, something else. I'm somewhere in between the two. Mm -hmm. I agree with you, Daryl, the color is amazing. Since we have, uh, you know, not that to see that uh, what bright colors, what richness could have been had uh, a, a TV in my youth when I was five years old when this came out. And, you know, uh, what did I know to expect? I was really interested that uh, of the the review that said it was bad said the best part of the whole hour was the Eastern Airlines commercials. <laughs> and I thought that was rather funny but because they're very long and detailed. I love gender issues at play in this show and how Elka Summer really fights, but I really admire how she they, they would like to make her into a blonde bimbo, but I like in so many ways her whole career was having to be in a bimbo movie, but trying to fight back against it. She knew seven languages. She was incredibly multi-talented. And um, while I, you know, hear uh, uh, Bob Hope wants to introduce her, you know, kind of as a Bridget Bardot kind of sex bomb, um, I, I love that, that she always kept her cool, um, uh, that, that uh, um, said she, she didn't play into the stereotypes, but always played against them, even though they, they have her be a Mary Poppins, you know, in a, a, a showing lots of leg and things like that. But at least her professionalism sort of versus the way even in the Eastern Airlines commercial, they bring out these stewardesses who get to go, coffee, tea, milk, and it's just the worst <laughs> kind of stereotypes. I just, I found it a fascinating sort of glimpse of um, the uh, uh, cultural conflict and the revolution sort of starting to happen in 1965. I love that the travel agent in the Eastern commercials was a man. Because he's probably one of the very last male travel agents, right? As that career becomes sort of feminized, mm -hmm. um, uh, so there, there was um, there was much to admire. There was uh, sort of uh, much to uh, sort of laugh about uh, about things I didn't thought worked so well. But uh, Daryl, you're right about the Beach Boys. It really was lovely to see them, to see them trying to do the Beatles kind of thing about standing around and joking. Mm -hmm. To just see that they, like most normal humans, unlike the Beatles, are going to stammer and not be very good at it. But I appreciated that they tried. And I also love that they performed live because a few missed notes and a little cracking of Brian's voice rather than um, them just lip syncing to a record right. mm -hmm. uh, showed they were live. And I, I like that aspect a lot. Which is, which is just great and it's great to see brian performing with them and everything because you don't get yeah. that for a whole lot longer than this yeah not a lot much longer, yeah so uh, terry what were your thoughts on it well i'll begin with what um you and kathy were just uh, mentioning which was uh it was great to to um hear the beach boys performing live and to hear what brian wilson sounded like not overdubbed you know yeah. it was not a highly produced yeah. uh production of um of, uh, of california girls and uh, and barbara ann you know these are you couldn't get two hotter uh, songs in 1965 than those two. They were, you know, at or near the top of 
all yeah. the charts for a while. Yep. Um, I want to come back to uh, what John had said at the beginning, which was all these uh, TV parodies. I was 12 years old, and so I knew every single one of these shows, <laughs> mm -hmm. except for Peyton Place. I was a little too young to be watching that. Um, but I counted eight. Um, the Munsters, The Adams Family, My Mother the Car. I, I must be the only person in the world who loved My Mother the Car. Everybody hated that show, but I thought it I was enjoyed cool. it. <laughs> uh, which, which they called My Mother the Lamp at one point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The Witch, The Fugitive, The Man from Uncle, which I which I enjoyed when I was a kid, Peyton Place, which they called Hayton Place. Mm -hmm. And uh John, it wasn't laughing, it was Hullabaloo, which was oh. a kind of a kind of a laughing. They were both NBC shows, but it was, was this was laughing even out at this point then? I think it was just no. before no, that's yeah. Six, yeah. Eight, I think. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. One thing I noticed about these parodies is that five of them were ABC shows. Three of them were NBC shows, which ah. the special was broadcast on. No CBS shows, which I guess goes back to, <laughs> you know, the, the troubles. <laughs> they were banned. <laughs> I thought it was interesting that uh, uh, it was either Elka Summers or Bob Hope. One of them, were, I think it was Bob Hope, who said that they had worked together. Um, they must have worked together on, you know, like one of his tours, because, boy... Did I get a wrong number, which was the movie they did together, it came out the next year. Now, maybe they had already shot oh. it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. But it was, a, it was a, the date on that movie was 1966. So I don't know what he was referring to, but obviously they, they knew each other and had worked together. Mm -hmm. uh, and and Daryl, I agree, it was really terrific to see Walt. Uh, um, and, and it is too bad that we don't have more of him in the um, wonderful world of color uh, recordings. But Kathy, you're probably right. Maybe they're they're saving it for possible release down the road. I want to say one last thing about the sketch, the Mary Poppins sketch. Uh, Mar sorry, the Maria Papanini sketch. <laughs> um, Bob Hope says um, when when uh, when Jack asks him, you know, where, where he learned to drive, and he said, "I learned to drive when I was uh, with Chrysler." And Chrysler, of course, was his sponsor at the time. In fact, this show preempted his Chrysler Theater uh, show. Uh, Elka Summers sings uh, Mozzarella Provolone Parmesan Ricotta, which is supercalifragilisticexpialidocious for Mary Poppins fans. And then finally, Bob Hope says at one point when he's being flown around, he said, uh, I passed Mary Martin up there. And that had to be a reference to her playing Peter Pan, even though it was ah. some years before. I think that's what that what that joke referred to yeah, uh, yeah. other than I that it was pardon <laughs> i laughed when they said it yeah it was funny it was funny <laughs> uh, so so other than than these little um details overall i i really enjoyed the uh, the show a lot it was um a great slice of entertainment from 1965 and a lot of it still holds up kind of amazing right i well what, one thing i think is so funny is I, the Jack says that joke I think at the beginning of this episode about it being not a hour long special, it's just two half hour shows or whatever. He says it about this one, he says it a few different times on his specials over the years, but it's like every time he says it is one of his better specials. You'd think you'd say that a lot on one because some of his specials that aren't so special really are like two of his half hour shows put together. I mean, there's no way this this lineup of folks. You, if you broke this in two, you would not be two of his regular half-hour shows put together. This is this is far superior to the to the to the guests he would get. He would only get one guest a week, and on these you have usually three, four, five guests. Sure. But go can, ahead, Kevin. Can I can I suggest it might be he might be thinking it's a throwback to the Shower of Stars mm -hmm. programs that he did back in the fifties. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much longer they went up, but maybe those were Chrysler. Too, I don't remember who sponsored them, but so you know, um, he did some. He did a variety of things mm -hmm. in those hour-long specials. Yes. Sometimes yes. regular skits, sometimes special things like this. Sometimes it was a variety show. So in Jack's mind, he might have been thinking, like I said, connecting sure. it to to those programs. Right. So and I think it's just a joke that works really well. So he just keeps going back to it too. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, John. Uh, so I. I firstly, I gotta say, the Walt Disney thing, that's a real tiger. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't care what they, how they train that thing. You would not catch me there with a, a real tiger. All right. Uh, but I wanted to uh, mention that I have this on DVD and that's how I watched it. And there was a point where something was wrong. I was like, this is this is weird. And it was how the, the sketch ended. So I'm like, I got to watch the YouTube video. And I watched it. They had cut the supercalifragilisticexpialidocious song oh. out. I guess they must not have been able to get the rights to it. Right. But it really makes a lot more sense with the song in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it, yeah. it, it really does impress me that in the mid-60s, adults were going to see the European sort of more art films or, or there were a combination of the sort of sexy, you know, the more American style, the more Italian style. So they were known to be sexually uh, sophisticated uh, in sort of jokes and situations. But, you know, I can't imagine, you know, today, here we are 50 years later and, you know, American tolerance for foreign films, you know, is not risen. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted to ask you or whoever knows the answer, what did happen with CBS? Because it seems like he was on CBS last season. Now he's on NBC, and maybe maybe there's a bit of a issue there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. No. He he. Go ahead. You want to go? No, okay. You, well, you essentially, he wasn't on uh, CBS last season. He was on NBC. The very last season of his show took place on NBC. But oh. before that, he was on CBS for the previous fourteen years, and then CBS. Uh, had decided that his his show evil evil James Aubrey so. yes <laughs> yes that his show no longer needed to be there um, and they it was very inappropriate the way they got rid of him it, it would be, it would have been lovely if they would have you know just talked to him and said you know what do you think we think it's about time you know that sort of thing but apparently you don't do it that way in television and and a lot of shows get just bad endings even if they've been on forever i mean uh gun smoke they thought they were coming back for a 21st season all of them and all of a sudden they were canceled and that was it unceremoniously after 20 seasons you would think at least those guys served to get a phone call that you know, like told them you know we decided that this is not the best way this is a subtle message for my friends at wwj the cbs owns the radio station in detroit uh, right, where i worked for a couple of years. A similar situation, huh? <laughs> Very similar. Yes. Because well, the the supposedly what they had said to Jack, um, they sent a, a young executive, correct, Kathy? Um, to, to and and he said, you're th I think he said, you're through, old man, was what the, what the, <laughs> the, the and it's like, come on, man. You could, you could have like a, a, a have a cake and say, you know, uh, this yeah. is, kind of your retirement now it's a forced retirement or whatever but this is what's happening and jack's like sorry that's not happening and then he goes over and works to deal with nbc they would have i think nbc wanted to keep him on for many years and things but his show just continued well, to dwindle yeah. its audience yeah and it had i mean for a comedy show 15 years is a long run and so they decided, you know, this is probably not going to work. And certainly they, they enticed him with going, hey, but we're still going to do these specials and maybe you'd be interested in that. And they followed through and did that. And I think they, they benefited from this for years to come. Those specials, like Kathy said, were very highly rated and everything. Uh, yeah. They were only a couple times a year. And so they could do, work out really well. CBS kind of killed the golden goose a little bit with the uh, – getting rid of him if CBS would have approached him differently and then would have talked to, about doing specials for them, I'm sure he would have been doing specials for CBS. Well, J J Aubrey was all about, he was pushing the the, the uh, rural shows, the, the corn-fed comedy of uh, uh, Beverly Hillbillies and Green Acres and, uh, you know, those uh, Petticoat, Petticoat Junction. Junction. Sure. And when he was finally fired, that's when they killed all those shows and then brought in Laugh-In and All in the Family. And so, CBS has been kind of waves of, of mm -hmm. kind of, of, of pushing and oppression. And, and the 60s were this sort of cold war between CBS and NBC, with ABC being the third partner. It was all about ratings. How many eyeballs can you get? Because it was the three-channel world. And so they were trying to attract um, advertisers based on could you get 70 million or 71 million? 
71 and a half million um, uh, viewers for a program. And so the um, Aubrey and his counterpart at NBC literally sat there with a big board of the weekly schedule, trying to think of what should we deploy against what? And, you know, so old programs were starting to fall by the wayside in kind of ugly ways as the network executives were finding this young baby boomer audience was becoming more and more uh, important and viable. Of course, they would throw out the older audience and go in with the um, Mary Tyler Moore show and All in the Family and, and all those Norman Lear comedies in 71 to specifically go for that audience. Right. And I'll shut up in a second, but there's a terrific study to be done about the role of specials in the weekly schedule in this, in this time in the 60s. Three channels and you think you've got everything set with these weekly series. But I love the inventiveness or the strangeness of these specials. Any a, a network that can make the Paul Lind Christmas special, that can make the Star Wars, <laughs> the Star Wars special, Christmas right? <laughs> special. You know, it's just fascinating about what, you know, I, as I said, that era when, when there were, we don't have Netflix, you know, doesn't have, we don't have variety specials like this anymore. No. And, well, they were, and, they, and speaking really, of the Star Wars special, what I often hear as a critique of that is it really wasn't a special. It was like two half hour Star Wars shows put <laughs> together. And so that, you know, just doesn't hold up. But anyway. With B. Arthur. <laughs> and, yes. Uh... That is one of the all time worst specials. What's great is Jack was better than all of the, than the Star Wars special. All of this, you can watch any Jack special and be happier watching that than Star Wars. <laughs> 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 is the anti-special anyway uh, i think we'll let it go at that i hope folks really enjoy this fun fun special and this great performances by the beach boys great chance to see walt just um delightful special for me in a lot of ways and and going brings back my childhood with watching so many of those shows that were the goofy goofy shows of the 1960s and this really captured that flavor I we 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 talked a little bit about the joke, but I, the the joke that really set well with me was the whole oh I hate this person and, and she hates that person and everything, and then they go oh you must be from Hayton Place instead of Peyton Place, and I thought oh Hayton Place oh, what a great play of words on that show because that's what that show is all about <laughs> anyway uh, delightful delightful presentation so enjoy and we'll see you folks next time thanks everybody. The Bob Hope Chrysler Theater, usually seen at this time, will not be presented tonight so that we may bring you the following special program. The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. The Jack Benny Hour. It's the Jack Benny Hour with his guest stars, Bob Hope, the Beach Boys, his special guest, Elka Summer, and here he is, the star of our show, and here he is, the star of our show, Jack Benny. I've seen long entrances, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> He's not even halfway, and he's already traveled further than the fugitive. <laughs> hey, 
if we have to watch walking, let's watch something that walks prettier. Alki Summer. You know, it's nice to be working on a show with you again. Thank you, Bob. And you're certainly doing all right. What an impression you've made in America. You've only been over here a few years, and they're making a whole TV series about you. Oh, really? About me? Yes, The Long Hot Summer. <laughs> Bob, that's not very funny. You know, but it'll have to do until the jockey Longdon of the comedians gets here. <laughs> Him so long. Well, I don't know. I think he stopped to make a night deposit. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, much as we hate to interrupt this entrance, here's a word from the sponsor. <laughs> a day begins. For Eastern Airlines, another busy day. This day, 200,000 Americans will fly. One out of every six on Eastern. Eastern will service over 80% of America's industrial area. And the capital cities of Canada, the United States, Mexico, Bermuda, and Puerto Rico. On this day, on any day, we will carry more people than all but one of the world's airlines. Eastern, an airline with a big day's work to do. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. It was so nice out tonight that I decided to walk. In fact, I walked all the way from my home in Beverly Hills here to the studio. And it's good for me, you see, because it gives me rosy cheeks. And this show, being in color, makes that very, very important. Because the last time I did a show in color, I didn't walk. See? So in order to make sure I had rosy cheeks, they used a different system. Just before I went on, they had the stage manager choke me. <laughs> now, you know, I used to do half-hour shows all the time, you see. And this show tonight, of course, is a special. That is, they call it a special. It's not a special at all. It's an hour show. <laughs> they always make a big thing. That's, it's all it is is two half hours put together. <laughs> it's not a special. To me, a special is when coffee goes from 85 cents to 74. <laughs> That's a special. This is a television show, and I hope you all enjoy it. And I think you will enjoy the program because tonight, because in putting this show together, we didn't just stop with our wonderful guest stars like Bob Hope and Elka Summer and the Beach Boys. In addition to that, I went out of my way to make sure that the show would have all of those elements that are so popular on television today. So would you please, would you please open the curtains? <laughs> Yesterday? Oh, ho, ho. that's funny. Gee, I forgot to ask him when the funeral is. 
Father, I've got something to tell you. Don't bother me. Tell your mother the lamp. Mother the lamp? What is it, son? I got married today. You did? Yes, I married a witch. <laughs> Come in, dear. I'm Dr. Thimble. I've got to keep running. From city to city, always on the run. Never a place to stop. They're after me. They're after me! Who's after you? The doctors. I voted for Medicare. <laughs> Your mother has a fever. <laughs> Are you a doctor, too? Why, no, I'm secret agent 008972. <laughs> You're after the wrong person. He didn't do anything. We did it. But it wasn't our fault. We come from a broken home. Yes. My father is an alcoholic and dislikes my mother. And my sister got a divorce from her husband. And my aunt has 18 children and despises every one of them. They must come from Hayton Place. <laughs> yes, so arrest us. I didn't come here to arrest anybody. Then what is all this hullabaloo? Hullabaloo! Close the curtain, please. Close it yourself. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> now, for those of you who didn't see your favorite program, naturally, we couldn't cover everything, you see. But now, getting on with the show, I'd like to, uh... What? It is? <laughs> well, evidently, that long walk didn't quite do it. I have to go back and have the stage manager choke me a little. <laughs> so while I'm gone, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be entertained by one of our most popular singing groups, the Beach Boys. <laughs> They knock me out when I'm down there The Midwest farmer's daughters They all make you feel all right And the northern girls with the way they kiss They keep their boyfriends warm at night I wish they all could be California We wish they all could be California I wish
The hallways of this romantic Caribbean resort echo the splendor of Spain's golden age. You might never have discovered it, but he has. He's a travel agent. He's in the business of knowing where to stay, what to see, what to do, and how much you'll probably spend. The travel agent in your town is a good neighbor to know. He can whisk you off to sunspots like Mexico, Florida, Bermuda, and the Caribbean with a minimum of time and trouble. At Eastern Airlines, we work closely with them because we know that the best trips begin with a short trip to your travel agent. You know, ladies and gentlemen, there's a rule in the theater that every show should be graced with beauty. And since the sponsor didn't think I met those requirements myself, <laughs> it's my pleasure now to introduce the international motion picture star, Miss Elke Sommer. <laughs> Elke, let me look at you a minute. Isn't she beautiful? Huh? Isn't she gorgeous? No, really, did you ever see anyone in your life uh, who looked... What? Jack, this is embarrassing. What's embarrassing? I was complimenting you. Well, I know, and I appreciate it. I mean, any girl would. But I think that physical appearances are overemphasized. You do? Yes. <laughs> well, girls like to be recognized for other things, like their personalities or their talents or their education. Now, for instance, in my case, I think the fact that I speak five languages is much more important than my physical appearance. Don't you? <laughs> Elke, would you mind repeating that, please? Yes, I said the fact that I speak five languages is the important thing. Elke, Georgie Jessel speaks eight languages. I've yet to hear anyone whistle at him. <laughs> you know, even when he's wearing a bikini. <laughs> but, Elke, I'm really impressed. You, you speak five languages, mm -hmm. huh? French, Italian, German, Spanish, and English. That's, yeah, that's wonderful. You know, I've traveled so much through Europe, and yet I don't know anything uh, but English. You miss so much. You really do. For instance, whenever I went to Italy, I kept hearing one phrase all the time. I kept hearing people say to me, quanto puo, qualguno, essere tanto, turchio. Now, what does that mean? Let me see. Uh, quanto puo, qualcuno, essere tanto, turchio, huh? That means... How can a man be so cheap? <laughs> I don't know. It sounded so nice in Italian. In French. I know what it means. A waiter explained it to me. He had a grip like my stage manager. Now, Elfie, I'd love to stand here talking to you, but it's time for your song now. And you have exactly two seconds to change your dress, spray your throat, and get ready to sing. But, Jack, that's impossible. But, Elkie, it's a number from your new MGM record album. Well, in that case, I'll manage. <laughs> Last year, I went to Spain to find romance I looked and looked in vain until by chance in old Madrid I met this kid 
I took one look and slipped my lid. And as our lips met in the burning kiss, I told myself to stop and whispered this. The handsomest guy in this town. Stay away, stay away from that clown. He gets a kick out of flirting and fooling around. Stay away, stay away from that clown. He's a clown. He's a clown. He's a clown. He's a clown. Yes, he does. Yes, wise. Goodbye. He's just a tiger who'll tear apart all of your dreams. Stay away, stay away from that clown. Cause a place to have fun and it's the Stay away, stay away from that clown He's a clown, he's a clown, he's a clown, he's a clown <laughs> Soon you'll catch on to his lies Then you'll hear his alibis Know in your heart he's only deceiving Don't be a fool and end up going From me and keep both of your feet on the ground. Stay away, stay away from that clown. Look past his looks and I'm sure you'll find just what I found. Stay away, stay away from that clown. He's a clown, he's a clown, he's a clown, he's a clown. You know, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first season oh, Mr. Benny. since... Mr. Benny. Yes. Oh, Mr. Yes. Benny. I'm your travel agent, and I want to talk to you about the trip you've booked from New York to Miami on Eastern Airlines. Well, look, I'm in the middle of a show right now, and I'm not going anyway for two weeks yet. Oh, I know, but Eastern wants you to be completely satisfied. Look, a plane trip is a plane trip. Not when you fly Eastern. Mr. Crawford... He's your Eastern ticket agent. How do you do? He has your tickets. Oh, Mrs. Benny flies at a discount. Family plan, you know. <laughs> good, good. But I, I do have a show oh, to do right now. Look at girls. girls. I got a show girls. to do. Now, I these mean... will be your stewardesses. They're thoroughly trained. And they can answer any questions you might have about the plane or the flight. See that you're perfectly comfortable. Oh. And they've taken a special course to teach them how to say... Coffee, tea, or milk. <laughs> you know, gosh, I may have a little of each, you know. <laughs> Oh, Captain. Now, this is your captain. I see. First officer and second officer. They're part of a team that's established one of the best on-time records in the air. And they'll bring you gently down in your eastern jet. Mm. And, Mr. Benny? Yes? If you even feel the plane land, you just tell me, and I'll do it all over again. (laughs) 
Oh, I will. I'll remember to tell you. Now, all these people here are just to make little old me happy. Isn't oh, that right? not only you, Mr. Benny. At Eastern, every passenger is king. And you'll dine like one, too. Gentlemen, dinner on your famous restaurant flight will be prepared by the chefs at Boise. No! <laughs> Gee, that's... That's marvelous. That's... That's, that's wonderful, but... Well, what are you looking for? I mean, the orchestra. Isn't there dancing? <laughs> Oh, Lawrence? Lawrence? <laughs> Where are the bubbles? Oh, no, no, no. Look at such a big airline, only a three-piece orchestra? <laughs> that commercial, huh? You know, I've done whole shows with fewer people. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, before I bring back the Beach Boys, there's something I'd like to tell you. Immediately after this show is over, I'm flying to London for a command performance for the Queen of England. I don't want to brag, but this is not the first time. I've already done three command performances. The first time I entertained Her Majesty was at Buckingham Palace. The second time I entertained the Queen was at the Palladium. And the third time I played Oh Promise Me at her sister's wedding. <laughs> Their customs are so different from ours. We only throw things at the bride and groom. <laughs> I thought I'd wait a second for that. <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to this trip because I love England. And every time I'm over there, I always make it a point to visit Stratford on Avon. See, people come from all over the world to Stratford, and I don't blame them. They've got the most wonderful pancake house there. <laughs> no wonder Shakespeare was so fat. <laughs> but you know, one of the reasons that I love to do these... <laughs> Wait, a Look, do I... Wait a minute. Do I need... Do I need color again? No. Then why, why, why are you doing this? To shut you up. I want to hear the Beach Boys. <laughs> oh, well. I can take a hint. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a singing number from their new album, The Beach Boys. You know, when you do a television show and you do it conscientiously, you're constantly changing and improving. 
and you never know when or where the reason for these changes may come. As a matter of fact, this show tonight, a change came about quite by accident. When on a purely personal matter, I went to see one of the most important men in our business, Walt Disney. <laughs> Well, I like them, but uh, let's don't forget that darn cat. The title of the picture is the important thing. we got to punch it. Okay. Yeah? Mr. Jack Benny is here to see you. Jack Benny? Send him in. wonder what he wants. Well, I thought he was still mad at you for not using him in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> uh, finally got through to him. It was a cartoon. <laughs> Oh, Jack. Hi, Walt. Good to see you. Good Thank to see you. you. Thank you. This is a real pleasant surprise, you know? You don't come around here very often. No, what a beautiful studio you have here in this office and everything. Well, I think after Mary Poppins, I can afford a redo. Sit down, sit down. Sit down, sit down. Esmeralda, be quiet. Okay, Walt. <laughs> Everybody around here calls me Walt. I know. But Jack, what's on your mind? Well, Walt, you see, tomorrow I'm doing an hour television show with a large cast and crew. And I thought that instead of taking him to dinner after the show at the Bistro or Chasen's, that just for a change, I thought it'd be kind of nice if I took him through Disneyland. That is, if it's all right with you. Oh, Jack, I think it's a wonderful idea. How many people are there? 110. <laughs> That's not too many, is it? No, no. Uh, in fact, we have a special department that handles large groups at a discount. A discount? Yeah, that means... I know what it means! <laughs> Look, Walt, I was thinking. You know, with a big show like mine, I wind up with practically nothing. <laughs> Ten people. I mean, even with the... with a discount. <laughs> They would really run into... And since you, you see, the fact that you own the place, I thought maybe... Well, come on in, Chang, behave yourself. Go ahead, Jack, pay no attention to him. We're all one big happy family here. Whatever you can say to me, you can say in front of him. <laughs> Well, Walt, as I was saying... One big family. One big family. Shut up. <laughs> now, Walt, as I was saying... <laughs> nice pussycat. <laughs> uh, Walt, as I was saying, you see, 110... Oh, incidentally, did you ever get those four complimentary tickets I sent you to one of my television shows? <laughs> Oh, yes, Jack, thank you. You know, I'd almost forgotten that was about nine years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, just, just about, yeah. Now, I was saying, I'm taking 110 people to Disneyland. And, oh, oh, Walt, I must tell you, I think it's just so wonderful the way you're always taking groups of, of poor, underprivileged children through Disneyland free of charge. Well, Jack, we don't publicize that. How did you know? My sister's kid went once. <laughs> he had a wonderful time. You know. He brought me back some candy and everything. <laughs> <laughs> now, Walt, it's silly to keep beating around the bush. What I was wondering was... Wait a minute, Jack. I think I'm getting the idea. You want 110 free tickets? Well... <laughs> I had no idea that's what you wanted. I didn't. I'm only a bird. <laughs> Sorry. Let's see here. Wait a minute, Jack. I seem to recall that when Disneyland first opened, I gave you a 14-carat solid gold pass, lifetime pass to Disneyland. Yes, you did give me a solid gold pass. But well, where is it? Here. I had a round of <laughs> 
Okay, 110 free tickets. And I hope you all have a wonderful time. Ah, thanks, thanks, Walt. Hey, listen, you've been so nice to me, I'm going to do something for you. Yeah, what's that? Well, you know how important it is when a motion picture is publicized on a television show. Oh, yes, I certainly do. Well, now, look, at on my show tomorrow night, I have a beautiful foreign actress. And we're going to do a foreign film, you know, like they do in Italy, an Italian film. See? Yeah. And I'm going to rewrite the whole thing so that it has a sort of a Walt Disney approach. Well, Jack, I don't know how you can possibly apply my movie-making approach to a foreign film. I mean, everyone I see seems to be so earthy, so full of basic, raw emotions. That's true. That's true, Wal, but don't worry about it. It'll work out. Ah, but there's such short time. Won't it be a problem? Not when you're as creative as I am. <laughs> He's living in the wonderful world of Benny. <laughs> don't worry about a thing. It'll be great. And thanks so much for the ticket. Always glad to help a friend in need, Jack. Goodbye. <laughs> Walt! I was just thinking. Now, you see, my wife, Mary, she's not on my show, but she's never been to Disneyland. And I was just thinking... <laughs> My approach in an Italian movie? This we'll have to see, won't we, boys? <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, the sketch you're going to see will be a little different than the way we originally planned it because I made some revisions to keep my promise to Walt Disney. And we're going to do it immediately after a word from our sponsor. Eastern Airlines Reservations. Miss Harrigan, may I help you? It takes people to make an airline go. Good people. These are the people of Eastern. A captain bringing you home on time. A stewardess, caring for your smallest needs. A weatherman, guiding your pilot to an easier route. A craftsman, working to microscopic tolerances. Is that a nice flight? May I help you? People. Eastern people. with the people of Eastern. See how much better an airline can be. Please, bambinos, not so much a commotion. Your mama's got a pack. Stop! Oh, where's your papa? Rosario! Bring my dresses. I'm a bring, I'm a bring. <laughs> Don't rush me. <laughs> Here, my little apiece. <laughs> now, Rosanna, call the chauffeur to pick up my bags. The chauffeur? Marcello, come up here right away. No, I can't take this one. Look, she's wrinkled. Well, do what you always do, Angelina. You put it on, you take a deep breath, and she's oppressed from the inside. <laughs> Papa, where's the mama go? How many times I gotta tell you, your mama's a go to spend the summer with her sister in Napoli. That's where your mama's a go-go. <laughs> but the papa, who's gonna take care of us? 
Uh, don't worry. Yesterday, your mama, she's a call agency. They're going to send over a governess. That's right. Now, Rosano, take the bambinos out of here while I finish packing. All right, come on, the bambinos. I get you a frozen banana. <laughs> Oh, it's a me, a Marcello. Huh? <laughs> well, I'll be ready in a moment. Uh, how long do you think it will take to get to the airport? Oh, about a 45 minute. Do you think we should take the Via Veneto? <laughs> no, that's a pretty crowded. You know, three months is a long time to be away. Yes, yes. Well, it's getting late. Perhaps we should leave. Ah. Marcello, Marcello. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you. I don't know how I'm gonna get along without you for three whole months. I love you. I love you. Wherever I work, it's the same thing. <laughs> Please, you're mashing my mustache. Marcello, what's come over you? The first three years, you were such a nice chauffeur. All the time, you used to hold me and hug me and kiss me. Things were so different. Well, I had to do something. You didn't have a car. <laughs> Angelina! Yes, Rosano, my love. You better hurry. She's a getting late. I'll be right down. I don't know. Every time a Marcello does something for Angelina, it takes him a long time. <laughs> I don't know why she keep it. <laughs> it must be the governess. Funny that. There's a nobody there. Maria Papinini. <laughs> Maria Papinini. That's a nice name. I understand you need a governess. Yeah, you see, my wife, she's going to be gone three whole months. And that's a long, long time. <laughs> I put this away. your wife was going to be away? Only three months. <laughs> you, you a governess? Yes, but I'm sorry. I don't have any references. Oh, well, we don't care about that. You know, because I can call your last employer. That's impossible. He's in prison for shooting his wife. <laughs> He's a shoot his wife? You sure? I was there being interviewed when he did it. <laughs> that must have, must have shocked you. Yes. Usually they wait a few days. <laughs> oh. Marcello, put the bags in the car while I say goodbye to everybody. Come on, look around the house. I want you to see the house. Look first, the house? Yeah, first look in the closet. Look first look in the closet. First look in the closet. All right, Rosano. It's time for me to go. You don't have to take me to the airport. 
Marcello will take me. Marcello? Yes. When did he learn to drive? <laughs> I learned to drive when I went with Chrysler. <laughs> We'll have a nicer time. <laughs> Maybe you'll come back to be four or three months. <laughs> you mind your own business. <laughs> now, Angeline, you, you, you need a vacation. You need a longer vacation. I wouldn't have let you come back not a one day sooner. Oh, you a nice man, Rosano. Well, I go. <laughs> Rosano, what's that umbrella doing open in the house? That's a bad luck. That's a bad luck for you. A good <laughs> luck for me. <laughs> now, you go. You go. Have a good time. Ciao. Ciao. Have a good time. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Maria, you had a hide. You had a hide in the closet. That's all right. I'm used to it. <laughs> now, now what, what would you like it to drink? Huh? Well, don't you think we should discuss your children first? Oh, my children! <laughs> oh, yeah, my children. Bambino. Bambinos, this is your new governess, Maria Papanini. How do you do? How do you do? Uh. Miss Papanini? Would you like to play with us? Oh, yes. No, wait, wait. No, 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 not now. It's a time for you to go to bed. But the papa, he's the only 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, and then go, go play. Go play someplace. Oh, good play. Here, here, here. here here's some money. Go buy something. Have a good time. Have a good time? Everywhere I go, it's the same thing. <laughs> oh, aren't they cute? How about some lunch? All right. Look, Lord, that's a good idea. What can I fix for you? You fix lunch? Sure, I want you to rest. Look, what would you like to have? I'll make your favorite dish. What do you like the best? Well, I like cheese. Cheese. Mm -hmm. And my favorite is mozzarella provolone parmesan ricotta. Mozzarella provolone parmesan ricotta? <laughs> what kind of a dish is that? It's wonderful. Listen. Mozzarella provolone parmesan ricotta. You should eat it every day and you should eat a lot. It is great with vino and it's even good with water. Mozzarella provolone parmesan ricotta. Mozzarella provolone parmesan ricotta. You can eat it icy cold and you can eat it hot. Da. Cook it in a tiny pan or in a great big pot. Mozzarella, provolone, parmesan, ricotta. Mozzarella, provolone, parmesan, ricotta. Any vitamins you need, you'll find that it has got that. Even makes a worn out horse into a champion trotta. Mozzarella, provolone, parmesan, ricotta. Mozzarella, provolone, parmesan, ricotta. So what you want. Look, I go down to the store and I get some mozzarella provolone parmesan ricotta. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this is going to be a fun for three months. <laughs> driving through traffic with 180 pounds sitting on your lap. <laughs> Hello. Who are you? <laughs> I'm at the chauffeur. Who are you? I'm the governess. And I think you're cute. <laughs> there goes Sunday. <laughs> 
kiss me? No, no. No, please, have a respect for the uniform. What kind of man do you think I am? <laughs> I cannot cheat on a boss's wife. But I cannot help myself. You are so attractive and so handsome and so strong and so exciting and so masculine. Oh. Yeah, you left out magnificent, exquisite, and humble. <laughs> I'm tired of beating around the bush. Kiss me. Not bad for a governess, huh? <laughs> you must tell a heck of a bedtime story. <laughs> Don't talk. Don't kiss me. I mean, if he finds us like this, I lose my job. Yeah, yeah, I'll hide you in the closet. No, 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 not in the closet. Hmm? That's too American. Um, here, take this. Yeah? There. <laughs> You're back, and you know why? Why? I'm hungry. All right, then I have fixed your lunch just for you and me. Well, what about the children? I send them to camp. <laughs> I may suggest what you want mozzarella, provolone, parmesan, ricotta. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> Mary Martin up there. <laughs> now, where were we? Like this. Maria, now, I don't know which of one of these are wines to serve. Maria, Maria, I bring you some nice, uh, Marcello. Maria, what is it? Is? Uh, he, his mustache was wrinkled, and I was pressing it. <laughs> I don't believe it. Marcello, you cannot do this to me. She's a man. I saw her first. Yeah, but I have a better accent. <laughs> no. I don't care. She loves me, and I love her. Fits in to finish off the plata. Mozzarella, provolone, parmesan, ricotta. A mozzarella, provolone, parmesan, ricotta. We all had a lot of fun, but something we forgot. Yes, it's me, your son, and it's me, your small adopter. Mozzarella, provolone, parmesan, ricotta. Mozzarella, provolone, parmesan. It's Sunday in Mexico. The sun floods an arena. The historic duel is on. The sun spotlights a diver at Acapulco. Referees a children's game at the pyramids of Teotihuacan. The sun warms a beautiful mermaid in Puerto Rico and covers the vacation paradise of Miami. Every year, more people choose this one to the sun because Eastern service is as warm as the destination. Fly Well, ladies 
ladies and gentlemen, that's our show. And I want to thank my guest stars, Bob Hope, Elka Summer, and the Beach Boys. Incidentally, that sketch we did. Uh, Mr. Benny? Mr. Benny? Yes? Mr. Walt Disney just sent someone over here to get his tickets back. <laughs> Look, he gave me those Disneyland tickets, and I'm not giving them back so fast. Uh, I wouldn't be too sure. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> nice pussy cat. <laughs> Featured on tonight's show were Naomi Stevens, Lee Patterson, Bill Baldwin, Bob Garrett, John Ireland Jr., Gerald Michinaw, and Sylvia Marino. Flying by Foy. <laughs>